I previously reviewed the GPD XD and the GPD Win. Now with the GPD Pocket in hand, I can give some better insight into what the GPD Pocket is and who would want it. It's Tech Wiz time. Hey guys, Jonathan here with Tech Wiz time where I create technology tutorials and review videos. If you haven't subscribed, then make sure you do and hit that bell icon too. The GPD Pocket is an amazing piece of technology. The fact that this device even exists is a testament to how well crowdfunding can work, except when it comes to things like the Smuck Z. And for those who think that this device is pointless or shouldn't even exist, then tell the people over on the crowdfunding page. Now granted, the GPD Pocket is a niche device and it has a very niche audience. To give you an idea, the GPD Pocket is huge in Japan. Now GearBest was kind enough to send out this unit to me for review. Thoughts and opinions are my own though, so first of all, what is the GPD Pocket? It's a pocket PC that's capable of running Windows 10 or Ubuntu. The CPU is the same as the GPD Win Aluminium version, being an X7 Z8750 1.6 GHz quad-core Intel Atom CPU. It's also got the same Intel HD 405 GPU. The difference between the GPD Win, however, is the fact that the GPD Pocket has a 1920 by 1200 7 inch IPS display. So that's a 16 by 10 ratio rather than the normal 16 by 9. You are still going to want Windows scaling turned on though. I'll talk a little bit more about the display later on. Another great thing about the GPD Pocket is that the storage has been upgraded to 128 gigabytes. It's using a Samsung eMMC, which gives approximately 145 megabytes per second read and 95 megabytes per second write. This little beast also comes with eight gigabytes of RAM, which is more than enough to run most Windows programs. Bluetooth 4.1 and Wi-Fi up to AC speeds is also included. The keyboard is a full-blown QWERTY keyboard, however, the key layout is a bit all over the place in my opinion. The keys themselves are chiclet style, which if I had to compare them to something, I'd say the look and feel of a TV remote control. The keys have a flat rubberized feel to them, and even though the layout is a little bit strange, I did find myself writing up social media posts on this very keyboard. No backlight though. The nub style mouse is okay and does the job, but I'm not a huge fan. Trying to navigate the full HD resolution feels really slow. I did go into the mouse options though and up the speed of the cursor to as fast as it would go and it feels a little bit better. To be honest, I found myself using my Bluetooth Logitech MX Master mouse instead. Probably the best mouse ever made. The battery life is claimed to be 12 hours depending on use, however I have been able to get approximately 6 hours with pretty normal usage. That's not bad considering all things. The battery itself is a 7000 mAh battery. To be safe though, I'd be carrying around a spare battery bank just in case. Speaking of the case, the Apple S Magnesium Alloy Body really gives the GPD Pocket a sense of class. The all-in-one look and feel seems to generate that comment of, is that an Apple product? Where I simply laugh and say, Apple haven't innovated in years. I'm sure I'm gonna get some thumbs down from fanboys for that one. Again, unlike Apple, the GPD Pocket has four ports on the right-hand side. USB-C for charging, mini HDMI style D, 3.5mm jack and a USB 3 port. You'll also see a fan grill to the front of the case for heat extraction. Flipping over the case, you'll see four rubberized feet to help protect the bottom of the case from scratches. It doesn't protect the edge of the hinge screen though. This is where it comes to one of my gripes about the GPD Pocket. It's my love-hate relationship with the hinge screen. When fully extended flat, the back edge of the screen does scrape on the surface that it's sitting on. This is not a huge deal because most people actually have this on their lap or holding it with two hands. The other thing is that with the touchscreen, the Windows taskbar is very difficult to press with a standard finger. Not a huge deal if you're using the mouse nub, but still an issue for those wanting to use the touchscreen. That's the hardware and the tech behind the GPD Pocket out of the way. So let's look at performance and use cases for this pocketbook. Firstly, if you're looking at this device purely for gaming, then I would highly suggest you check out the GPD Win. You can find a link for that one in the description below or my full review in the cards above. In saying that, the GPD Pocket will play all the same games at very similar speeds to the GPD Win. It'll even play some Nintendo Wii games. If you're looking to play Steam games with a keyboard and mouse, I would again highly suggest a separate mouse for a better experience. I even found playing games with my Xbox One Bluetooth controller perfectly fine on this device. When it comes to working on the GPD Pocket, I wanted to practice what I preach, so in saying that, the social media promotion that I did for this video and the script were all written on this device. And just to be clear, I also performed a rough cut of this video you're watching right now in Premiere Pro on the GPD Pocket. I've got to say, that's pretty impressive. Browsing the web, checking emails, writing up documents and even some rough Photoshop editing can all be done with minimal effort. Once again, the thumbnail for this video that you're watching right now 
was produced on this device as well. How awesome is that? So at 500 US dollars, who would I recommend this device for? I would have to say this is for the man or woman who wants to have a full-blown Windows machine to work with, but doesn't necessarily have the space for a full-size laptop. The size of this device is what makes it so appealing. The GPD Pocket will literally fit in most pockets. Don't forget to check down in the description because I might have a coupon code to get this a little bit cheaper from Gearbest. In a future video, I'll be providing a selection of tips and tricks to get more power and battery life out of the GPD Pocket. So, if you're looking forward to that one, make sure you've subscribed and have notifications turned on. Got any questions about something I didn't cover in this video, or you wanna know the performance of different games or software, then hit me up down in the comments. Consider subscribing to TechWiz Time if you love all things technology. Are you already a subscriber? Then click on that bell icon to get instant notifications of my brand new videos. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it, and as always, Imagine, learn, create. I wonder if Apple would ever bring out something like this. I, I doubt it, but it would be interesting nonetheless.